scoop my chair up. We are going to talk about reborning. I had several people contact me about how I pay air dry. I use air dry, okay? I do not use a um, specific reborning paint that you can get like from McPherson's or anybody else. I strictly so far have used just my regular acrylic paints. Now I'm going to talk to you about them, how I mix them, and everybody sees this differently. So I'm going to tell you, talk about how I do it. Not how everybody do it, does it, but how I do it. Because obviously everybody does it differently that use air dry paints. So one is, um, depending on your kit, and I got a leg here and I'm gonna grab a leg out of here, out of this kit. Now your kits usually are just the limbs and the head. You have to buy the body you have to make it look like a baby. So this is a Bountiful Baby Kit and this is a Dolls by Sandy Kit. Now you can see the difference in the color. Let me get this out of there. See the difference in the color. One's pink and one's way clear. This one, you would have to tone down if you want. Now, depending on what you want for the look of your kit, okay? First off, you have to decide if you have to do that. Um, with this one, I'm probably not going to. I could, and this is when you need a color wheel. I recommend a color wheel. Um, you can get them online, you can get them anywhere. So this kit, this one is a peachy color, okay? So this color is in this section right here. I'm pretty sure. You can kind of match it up a little bit. Okay, so it is, so you move the wheel to that color block right here, okay? The opposite is how you would tone this down. You would use a green. Now inside this box, there's different shades of color. Same with here. You find your shade, and these are numbered. So I'm thinking it's a number two. So I would look down here for the number two, and this is the color I would use to neutralize it, kind of. So this comes with, this particular color wheel comes with all kinds of instructions and how to use it. But this is gonna be beneficial to you to find skin tones, how you want to achieve it. Okay, and you could go into depth on how to use a color wheel. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I like this color. So I would just probably, you know, I prime. This is the next thing. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about is priming. Now with the reborn paints that you get from Anybody that's selling um, Reborn paints, uh, McPherson's, Bountiful Baby, you know, wherever you get them, a lot of them now don't require you to prime your kits. It's built into the paint. Well, I don't use those kind of paints. So I have to prime my kits. And I usually let this sit overnight. So what I started out using was glass and tile medium and I have five bottles of this. It is a rare commodity because a couple years ago, folk art decided they weren't gonna make it anymore. It ticked off a lot of re people in the reborn community that does air dry because this is what you use to prep your kit, prime your kit, plus you put it in the paint so it sticks to the vinyl. Now the new paints that you can get, reborn paints and stuff, are highly concentrated, so you have to mix them with water, and you don't have to do this step. It's You just mix your distilled water in it, you're ready to go. Well, I don't do that. 
So I would prime my kit with this. And when I ran out, I had to find an alternative. So I found Reborn FX from McPherson's and I had to get two bottles compared to this one. This one can cost anywhere from $2.99 to if you buy a, a set, you know, 12 bucks, whatever. These two takes the place of that one bottle. This is 30 bucks because it's got to come from Canada. So this emulsion is what it's called, paint emulsion. This is what I put in my paint when I mix it. So it sticks to the vinyl and you only need a drop. I mean, this has lasted, this is, this will last you a while. So I don't have to buy this one. I do have to buy more of this. I just picked this up. I'm like, crap, I do not have any more. So I'm going to have to go and use this to prime with now because I don't have any more of this, but I'm still going to use this in my paint because I don't want to have to go through because I don't know if I can find this again. So I'm going to have to order more of this. I don't know how much this is alone. This is the air dry um, primer. So just a okay. second. So that's how I prime and make my water. So I use this specific, let me get my paintbrush that I use. Okay. And there's a couple of them. Let me see. Okay. Here's my two paintbrushes so you can see them. This one I got at Walmart. You can get it as a kit. And this is one of the paintbrushes in there. I've already had the clip because it's starting to curl. I love this paintbrush. Um, I'm going to have to buy a new kit. Now this used to have what number it is on it and stuff. I have no clue. But this is what it looks like. You can buy it at Walmart. It's in one big kit. It's purple. This is the one that I use, and this one is the one I use. This is the cheapier version, and it doesn't have the thing on it either, but it's the same size, okay? This is what I call one brush. This side and this side. So both sides equals one brush. Half of this is considered half a brush. So when I'm explaining to somebody you need a half a brush of one color. This, that's what I'm talking about. So I would take, I'd put my distilled water in here and I use this bowl. And now I'll, it goes a long ways. And I use my, um, I use these bowls from Walmart, not Walmart, from Dollar Tree. There's four in a pack. And I will use probably 12 of these or more when I'm painting. Where's my... Where's my measuring spoon? Okay, it's in here. Okay, here's my measuring spoon. I bought a set of these and I only use this one. <laughs> and this is a half a teaspoon, or half a tablespoon. Okay, I fill this up with the distilled water. That's the water, right? And I buy distilled water from the grocery store, which looks like this. I'll show you what it looks like. And I get it in the baby section. This is, it, it'll say distilled water on it. And I got it in the, um, uh, the baby aisle, okay? And then I keep it in a little container on my desk okay so I put one half a tablespoon of water in here now the flesh color I have how many one two three four five six colors of flesh I don't mix my own flesh colors it's a pain in the butt uh, you can but I don't <laughs> I buy it already, the flesh color. And I think, while well, we're talking about it, I, a lady sent me these. This is pre-blended air dry paints. And they're from Art and Magic of Reborn's Waterborne Paints. And this has 
they're teeny. Look at the size difference, okay? They're teeny. I've never used these. It comes with instructions. I have not done this yet. And these are from developed and sold exclusively by Master Reborn artist Stephanie Tackett of Dummy Buns Reborn Supply. Okay, she got the lady that sent me these decided it's not for her. She don't want to she don't want to paint. So she sent me all the stuff that she had. I've got everything in here. Now they've got pink for, for nails. It says what it's for. Uh, capillaries, um, redness correction. You, for redness correction, you always use green, but it's a shade of green. There's a shade of red. This is a red. So you're gonna use a shade of green to neutralize it, okay? To tone it down. And then there's a flush color. There's a couple of flush colors in here. So anyway, I do have some. I have not used it yet. I have not used it yet. So I use, typically I use this one, and it's equivalent to Flush 08 by Genesis. Now, when I was learning this, I couldn't find Reborn Artists to share how to do stuff. So I watched the Genesis people, and I just looked at the color that they were using, the tone, color, tone, shade, of what they were using and I just went and found something that looked similar to it so this is what I found this is Delta I use ceram coat apple barrel which I only have a couple of colors with apple barrel and I have one color of folk art and so there's there's three apple barrel ceram coat and folk art Okay, that's the color. Those are the ones I use, and I do have deco art, but that's for the varnishes. So this is my flush color, okay? And you're gonna put in your emulsion. So you're gonna use one drop of this. And now what I found with this is it does change the color of the paint, which I'm not happy about. I found that out real quick. So you would mix, I don't know if you can see, you would mix, see it's made it kind of dingy looking you put that in there and then when you add your paint I start out with one brush so I'll do and I'm just gonna mix this up so I can show you make sure you mix your paint up shake it up and then I'll do one brush both sides and put it in here mix it up okay when you're first starting out I would make sure this was way watery. I've been doing this a while, so I kind of know what, how I want it. So you can see that it's really sticking to the sides and it's not see-through. See, it's not really see-through. I know that, and I'm used to that. But when you're first starting, you want to use less of this until you get it to the consistency that you're familiar with and that you like. I know two brushes is is good for me. And you can see that it's kind of it's kind of watery but not see-through, okay? When you're first starting, you want it transparent. So, for starting out this should be a lot watery waterier. So you would add more water to it to make it more see-through. So what I should have done is added the half teaspoon of water tablespoon and only half a brush and that probably would have made it so it's way see-through but I know I like it like this and even then after putting it on here it's not gonna show up that well it's gonna make a dent but it's not gonna make a huge dent so this kit's not primed. You always want to wash your kit, let it dry before you start. Okay, so that's how I mix. So, so that you know, you want to start out transparent, which means you're going to do a lot more layers. You build it up, okay? And with air dry, it does dry in the air, so it does dry fairly quickly. When I do, I always start at the back of the head and then I do the arms and then I do the legs. By the time I'm done with the legs, the head should be dry. And I can go on with the next layer or the next color, whichever 
you're going to do. You want to have a bucket of regular water, which I have right here. I keep down here. And you just put it in another container so you can rinse your brush after you're done. Now, my surface, I use training pads, doggy pads for my, say I fold it in half so I can do two babies with one piece. And so that. So some people will use these to, to mix their paint. I tried that. It doesn't work. I like bulk. So I like to have more water, you know, bigger thing. I, I like the glass. I don't like the plastic. So I don't use those unless I'm doing like teeny tiny things like nail beds or something like that. I don't do that. So that's how I mix the paint. Now, when you do your mottling, so I'll talk about mottling next, okay? And I will be back. I am back. So now with mottling, you're gonna do the same thing, but how thin you have it is gonna be up to you. I like the consistency that I'm used to doing. And sometimes with mottling, I may go a little heavier so it shows up, but it, that's a preference for whoever's doing the mottling. But I wanted to make clear how I measure things, how I put it together, and what I use to mix with my paints. I do prime. I do add a little bit into the paint because I want it to stick to the vinyl. And I have never had, I've sold a few babies now, I have not had any problems with any of my babies peeling or any of that. And it could be to the fact that I do layers and I don't add a lot of this because if you add a lot of it, I can see where it would peel. So we're not doing a lot of it. We're just doing enough minimal to do that. And like I said, these paints, I have not read it yet. These are what you would buy, and they're teeny tiny things. I mean, these last a long time. I've been doing this three years, and I've, I've got quite a bit of paint. And when it starts getting a little hard, I will get new ones, but... But for the most part, I don't know how these work. I don't know. I'll have to read it to see how it works because I'm not sure. So we talked about that, mixing the paints. That's how I mix it. That's how I get it to stick, mixing your paints. Um, then I use this for sealing um, bottles nipples. You can buy nipples now that don't have a hole in them, so you don't need to use this. Um, but if you don't, then you can use this. This is what I use. And then for the ending part to seal it when you're done painting, I love this. This is what I use right here. This Americana decor and it's soft touch varnish. Now, I also have this one by DecoArt, and it's a soft touch varnish. I, I used this in the beginning until I found this. And this is almost gone. I have to get some more of this. And I think this is another thing that you have to try to find. But this is what I use. You can use this, okay? Um, I do maybe two coats over the whole kit but the first coat is thin like thin some people mix this with water I don't mix it with water I just do it really thin and I paint it on with I put some in a in a bowl I'll dump some of this in a bowl you know probably the the bottom of this right and then I take a brush and I use a couple of these brushes depends on which one I'm this one is getting hot, hard and I've 
it, it, this is from that same kit and it's time probably to get a new one and get rid of this. I gotta soak it again. I gotta soak some of these brushes. But I've used this one, just a bigger brush, right? And you paint it on, I start at the head and I paint on a little section. And then I take, I haven't shown you this yet, and I will right now, these sponges. And I don't know if you can tell the texture of this. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a makeup sponge, but I get mine from Family Dollar. And let me see if I have a package up here. I don't think I do. Let me get one out. These are my favorite. And these are at Family Dollar. They're the Medusa cosmetic wedges, right? Latex-free silk application. Latex-free. You want latex-free. So those are the sp these sponges I use. So for texture, I rip it off. So now it is kind of bumpy. See that? It's kind of bumpy. And I save this one. Okay. And I've got some over here. Now I'll paint that varnish on, right? And then I take this and tap it, okay? And you, you thin it out so it's thin. And then you tap it in and you do two coats. I usually do about two coats and, and you will go through these. And I typically will use one for the head, sometimes two, and then I'll use one for the arms and one for the legs. Now sometimes it starts to get a little goopy and so you might use two, one for each arm and one for each leg and two for the head. So it really depends on how it, the sponge is looking because it does start to get hard. So that's what I use for varnishing. And if you paint with um, Reborn with air dry paints, what varnish do you do use? I do not want to do anything heat. It causes harm. I just, I'm just not into the heat stuff. This is all air dry. And so once this is varnished, I think on this bottle it says, um, let dry one to two hours before additional coats. So I'll put one coat on, depending what time of day it is. I'll go do something for a while. If it's still kind of tacky or whatever, I'll wait until the next day and then put another one on. And then I'll wait till the next day before I put the doll together. So you can wait that long. And this one, I think it's the same thing. Let me put light on so I can see it. Um, directions shake well it says allow to dry to the touch before additional coats water-based permanent so it's water-based to clean it and stuff you really want to shake these varnishes up because they stick to the bottom and um, but it's permanent and it's soft and now if your doll gets shiny you can reapply this you just got to let it dry now for the lips and for the nails um, anything I want glossy like the little eye I usually do the eye see see how your eye is kind of looks wet in there um, I use this one and it's the gloss varnish okay and I use this. I've got two of these and I've got three of these because I did use this in the beginning. But if I can't find this and it, I run out and it might be a while before I get it, I will go back and use this one. So there's my varnish and there's my gloss. Now after I varnish and do all that, I put this on after all of that with the lips. I wait until that's dry and then I do the lips. Okay, so there's that in the bowl and you got to make your mottling sponge this is what one of mine looks like they're all different depends on what you're in for and you just pluck them out with a um, eyebrow thing 
and your distilled water. Okay, I gotta take this upstairs. Now for paints, I'll show you what I use. There's a bunch of blues, There's a couple of purples, yellow, red, red, and white. Okay, here we go. Alrighty, so now let's talk about my paints, what uh, colors I use. And you can add darker tans, darker browns, black. You can, you can mix that up if you want. I do have some darker browns because I was going to attempt to do an AA baby, but I'm not confident enough to do that, so I'm not going to even go there. So... I use this for the fingertips. It's not white, but it's kind of like an off-white. And you can use flesh, but it doesn't look right. So I don't use the flesh tone. And like I said, I have six different shades of flesh, but this is the one I tend to go to is this one. And so there's my light colors. Now for the blues, I've got, um, well, they're kind of similar, kind of not. Okay, so I have four different blues here. And I wrote on here, this to me is the equivalent to the Aquamarine for Genesis. This is the folk art one, and it's this color. It's really like a vibrant blue. And this one is like a vein blue. That's for Genesis, it's darker. It's more like blue jean, and this is called um, Falio Blue, and it's kind of dark. So I don't use this one that often because I'm not a big fan, and I don't like the veins. I mean, they your veins kind of stick out, but not like in your face, you know. If you used this color, which is too dark for me, so I'd have to tone it down quite a bit. So I don't typically use this one for veining. I do use this one, which is more that color, and I do use this one. So this, you need blues, reds, and yellow, your primary colors, to mix to make other colors. So that's why you would need the color wheel. <laughs> so you could, it takes some getting used to, to to paint that way. So I tend to find, like if I want it to be veins, I try to find the color. I don't try to mix colors to make a color. I try not to do that because it's you can't guarantee that you, you get it right. And then do you mix enough? So I don't typically do that. I try to find the right colors to begin with and then go off of that. So this one I do use for mixing um, red and blue together and that makes a purplish color so and it's different from purple you know it makes a different color than that so those are my blues let me show you this one this one is like folio blue in genesis but it's called tahiti blue and it's like a turquoise kind of color and that's what it Kind of looks like and then I have this um, light light blue you could use this for veining too if you wanted but I have those blues purples I have dark purple for preemie and newborn and light purple for like zero to three months and bigger sometimes I'll use this other times I will not I'll just use this and not use as much so it's more watery and so these are the two purples and you can tell that I've used this bottle a lot it's almost time to get another one um, you just got to make sure you mix these up really well before you use them so they get all mixed up so there's my purples and then one yellow and this is like the whatever they call it um, in Genesis it, it looks just like this color so this is the color I use for yellow, if I need yellow, for the yellow tint, you know, it's like the tip of the nose, 
tip of the chin, top of the ears, um, the knee, the elbow, when you want to give it a little bit of, it just adds. And you have to find a tutorial that works for you. Now, I don't just go mixing it up and throwing it on the baby. Mm -mm. I have several tutorials that I have watched through the last few years. Um, ones that are free is what I tried to go for. Now, this is the newest one, and this one is from a Facebook group. And let me find her name. Pink Hearts Nursery. Now, she just did, she just put, made a whole tutorial together on how to do, to paint. And it's, it's very good. I printed it all out. I have it in this book. So I have this one. And I'm yet to follow her instructions yet. And then in here I have... And I'll tell you who I watched so you guys can go check it out. One is Miracle Baby Nursery on YouTube. She has several videos in there. And this one is for the newborn. I want for newborn. And I was playing around with flesh. And if I find something and it works, I'll put it down here on the paper to so I can see. So there's one. See, there's some different flesh tones until I got it right. And then, so it's Miracle Babies. Um, let me see. And if I can remember, I will link all of these down below. This is Miracle Baby Nursery. So I will try to... Um, and I wrote down each part. I watched the video and just wrote down everything. I probably watched each video two or three times first and then wrote everything down. Um, now, and then I watch other people like In Love With Reborns 2011, um, a couple other ones, and if she posts it, like she did one for, I don't remember, blushing. And I, I wrote in here on the top, and it's who it's from, and I put here, she is Genesis Red, a, pink, a dark pink, and a, another kind of pink. And that's how she made her blushing. And you can make your blushing however you want. See, my face is blushed right now. Because I've got, that's how I can tell my blood pressure has gone up a little bit. I'll get really rosy cheeks. So this is really, really red. And my nose is really, really red. One, because it's cold down here. And right here you know there's some blushing and it depends on what color you want to do it in some is like more of a pink pink and some is more like a red you know so it just depends okay preemie I did a preemie one and I wrote down all the colors that she used and this one's Miracle Babies Nursery um, and this is the one, Annette, this, now this is the one that I watched in the very beginning because she had a tutorial and I watched it and I had to watch it a lot and I wrote down step by step and I started out on pieces of paper like this and it's, it's messy, pieces of paper like this and then I turned around, I didn't get rid of it, I kept it in case I needed to look back at it and I turned around and rewrote it out. So it's nice. I rewrote it out. So that light is really shining. There we go. So um, that's Miracle Babies Nursery. Okay, who's this one? Okay. Um, rooting. She has a tutorial on rooting too. Um, let's see, I have painting with Annette. I like paint. I like, you know, she uses Genesis, but she also will, will tell you air dry too. She does both. And that's the one I pretty much use all the time is hers because I like the way it comes out. Um, let's see, who else do I got? Um... 
There's another gal too, but I can't remember her name, but mostly it's Annette from uh, Miracle Babies Nursery. But there's another lady too. And if you're doing, um, if you're, you just have to find who, see this one, let's see. I, just, I make a ton of notes for different stuff. And it's probably in here. I just don't know the name right off the top of my head. But there's several. And I will go in and down below I will leave a link to all of them. But do your own investigating, you know. And I know some people will offer a tutorial and you can buy it. Like there's one for rooting. I bought one, actually two of them, for rooting. One is the videos from Bountiful Baby I bought, all of them. And then there's another lady that I bought from. But there's several paints, I mean, there's several several out there, but there's not that many free ones. So um, you just have to find, and it took me a couple of years before I even got even close. But Annette was the first one, and she's really good, even though she's in Australia. <laughs> so the time frame is different. But on her channel, far as I know, they're still on her channel. She has... Um, a playlist of painting tutorials you paint with her and the first one I did I was it was it lasted a while was it a week I think it was every day for a week or two weeks something like that and I just wrote everything out and I saved them saved it in my um, I think it's in my how-to um, playlist but I'm not sure if I made it public or not um, but yeah, you just write down if there's somebody that you like and they're actually not really so much given a tutorial, but they're talking. You kind of make notes and stuff. But that's what I did. And so, and I've changed stuff up. There's not everything I do is um, word for word what she did. You know, I change it up a little bit. I may not add veining one time or something. Um you know, it just depends. And my colors are different than what she has. They're similar, but they're different. So the maroon um, for mottling. Mottling, you'll use um, purple, red, and blue. It's just variations of it. Okay. So I have, I used up, my one that I started out with is almost gone. So I have two different, I bought this one. This one is by Apple Barrel, it's Tuscan Red. And this one is by Deco Art Americana. And this one is Deep Burgundy. They're very similar, but not. As long as they're that dark red color, that's what I like. And this is the one that I've been using. The Ceram Coat one, maroon. And it's like Red 02. And I wrote on here, in case it was like if you're following somebody that does Genesis. And so I kind of resembled some of the colors, but not all the colors. And then you have your red, just regular red, for if you do a um, different kind of baby. But those are my paints. And those are the only colors that I have. You know, I got several different blues. You just gotta play around with it. Um, like most stuff is you play around with it. And depending on what you want to use. You know? Put that back up there. Put it all back away. And so most importantly, Importantly, is you know you need to use distilled water to mix with your paints and if you're using these you will still need distilled water I'm pretty sure I have not looked at this yet to see and I don't know if they um, it just says dilute 
so I'd have to really look at it and see. And every single thing, you always wash your babies first and let them dry. Um, um, see, it says proper prep coat. So, yeah, see, they have one. They have a clear a clear base primer, and that's probably in here. They do have a primer. Some of them will use a primer. Let's see, whatever's in here stinks. Um, there it is. Here's their primer. It's kind of pink, kind of a pinky color. But they have a primer that you put on. This one is air water based. So, yeah, because vinyl is like an oil, and water and oil don't mix, so you have to make it adhere. So, primer, waterborne, so slow dry. Well, it slows down the evaporation of the paint. Oh, okay. And their flow medium, instead of using water, they use that. And then they have matte gel in here to make your vinyl. Um, soft at the end for a uh, velvety finish. So I don't know. They got quite a bit in here. I have not tried any of this. And they're such small bottles. Dark flesh. So I don't know how they create it. You know what I mean? Because the paint looks just like my paint. You know? It looks just like it. It's just, yeah, it looks just like it. So, I'm wondering if people buy stuff and then put it in these little bottles and resell it, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. I have no idea how it works. But she pent, there's the ultra matte sealer. Look at how little these bottles are. I think these are all trial size. I don't know. You could, prob you could probably do a couple of babies with this. Um, you know, if you wanted to, like she gave me the, the mottling sponge and a hard sponge, another mottling sponge. These are cool. These ones are nice. I'd have to wash this one though. Honey buns. So they're on Facebook and stuff. It's honeybunnursery.com. A honey buns nursery supply.com and maybe they have a tutorial on how to use this but this lady didn't didn't like it or whatever and see here's the vein blue see it's like a green color so I have not used these and she sent me all of them I mean it has everything in here the flow medium so you would use this instead of water I don't know. I don't know how to base primer. I don't know. So that is one thing you could do. I don't know. I haven't sat down to read this. I think I will though. I'll bring it upstairs with me. And it, she, she even puts a color wheel in here, but it's got wet. So, color correcting wheel. So it's the same thing. If it's this color, then you use green. If it's this color, then you use this. If it's this color, then you use this, you know? So it just walks you through the different stuff. But there's a lot of colors in here. Yellow. 
See, in Genesis, they don't use that bright yellow. They use that orker, and I have it. It looks like a mustard, and I really am not a big fan of that. Let's see what else. Nail, lip, blush, and nail color. See, that's kind of like, see, it's like a maroon. So you just have to wash it down. Dark flesh, light flesh. Nail tip. See, it's like that color I have. It's like an off-white color. So, what's this one? So dry. We got the green, brown hair, dark skin color. I've never used that because I'm not doing that. Purple. Here's the purple paint. And this is what you mix the red and the blue and you get kind of this color. The green. Bing. And this is the corrector. So it has everything in here. So it's, I don't know how many dolls you could paint with this. I think this is a starter kit. It's one of these starter kits. And then you can buy the extra stuff for it. So anyway, this is the wedges. I love these. And your color wheel. You need a color wheel because it's going to help you in the long run. So I'm going to take that upstairs. So I hope this video helped all of you that are trying to learn how to do this. Um, you can go watch my, I did post one here. I have them over on my Patreon though. Um, the paint with me from start to finish. I, I do have one on here. So um, you can see how I how it turns out but until you look at it in person you can't really it's hard to see I try to do a good job by showing you up close and stuff but I'm, I'm hoping that you can get the gist of the color you know and mine isn't really translucent but it kind of is you know you can kind of see through it but I always start out with and you don't have to but because this one is so light complected, I do start out with a flush layer before I go in and do, you've got your washes, you got your mottling, you got your veining, and you know, you got your yellow, you know, you got your washes to, to make the kit look like skin. So I think there's three, there's probably more, but I only use a red wash, a blue wash, and I think there's a yellow wash and a green wash. So I think there's four. So, and everybody does them differently. So that's what I'm saying. You gotta find what works for you and what makes sense, you know? Cause I watched this one tutorial and I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. I don't do that until the, you know, it just, it just depends on who you're watching. And I would always wear a pair of gloves, get some gloves because and this is why Tanner's messed up. I didn't with him. So when I was holding his face like this, I had these patches on his cheek that never got paint. And I had to strip him twice. Or is it three times? Twice, I think. And repaint him. Was not happy camper <laughs> to do that. So if you use gloves, um, one, if, I'm, if I have my nails done, it doesn't get all through my nails and stuff and on my hands. But when you're handling the kit, you don't want to put your oils from your, on, your, um, on your kit because it will do that. It'll leave a clear mark and paint will not stick to it. No matter what you do, you have to start all over again. And it sucks. Now, this is a cute kit. This is... This is Paisley, the Paisley kit. Oh, she's open-eyed. Yeah, she's cute. Look at that face. She's way cute. I haven't done her yet. And I think she is a 20 inch. So she's she's zero to three months because or big newborn because newborn clothes may not fit her after you after you fill her up. Because I have her eyes. Her eyes are like a newborn blue color. Newborn blue color. And here's her body. That's the bum. Here's the 
front. It's not a gathered one. And she's th three quarter length limbs, which is okay. But I'm going more towards full limb babies because you can do more with them, you know. And so this is the Paisley kit. And this is from Bountiful Baby. And I'll show you her hand. I love her hand. Look at her hand. So cute. Look at the wrinkles. I love the wrinkles. Everybody is scared of these. Don't be scared. You do not have to do all these wrinkles. You do the deep ones. And that's sufficient. Oh, she's cute. She's way cute. Look at her feet. Look at her toes. And I can tell you right now, she'll wear uh, size one shoes, newborn to size one little shoes. Look at those. Look at that. Beautiful. For me, learning, it was easier for me to get ones that have more detail. More detail. Because then you, you knew what you had to paint in, you know? Ones without hardly any detail, you have to add the detail. And that was harder for me to do. I like it already on there. <laughs> and you just paint it. So this is adorable, baby. And like I, I've said before in another, in another video, if you're not comfortable painting, you can get those kits that are pre-painted from Bountiful Baby. What are they called? Uh, Klein? Kine? Babies? Kine, I think, to Bountiful Baby. And all you have to do is buy the body. And you can get, you can buy glass beads online um, because those babies are preemies. Um, you can buy the five pound um, glass beads for like 20 bucks or so, depending on where you go. And then you can also, if you don't want to use glass beads, you can use the poly pellets, but you can't put that in the arms. You can't put it in the arms. You just put it in the body. But for waiting, you need that, those glass beads. And I think I get number 30. I think, ML30, I think. I'm not positive. I think that's what I get. And I found a place on Amazon that I can get 20 pounds for the same price I can go over on eBay and get 10 pounds. So I've kind of switched. You have to, it, they fluctuate like anything else. So anyways, that's a good option if you don't want to paint. It's already painted for you. It has the hard on the head. It has the painted hair, but it's like textured. So... The only thing you have to do is just put it together and you've got your doll. And if you have the glass beads and the nylon and a polyfill to fill the body and weight the body, it'll take you maybe 10 minutes to get your baby done. You have a baby. It's really easy and that's the best way, but you're gonna end up paying 50, probably 50 bucks for the kit without the body. Sometimes they'll sell it with the body. And, um, but these kits, just this, just this is 50 bucks, you know? And then you have to turn around and get the body and the eyes, because this one's open-eyed, and the body, you know? And then decide if you want to do hair or not. Or, um, yeah, so that one's really cute. See, I know what I'm drawn to. I like the squinty baby eyes. So cute. I've been really tempted to get a small pair of eyes. I have to go see what the smallest pair are in the dark, deep blue. And I'm um, cut open Emmy's eyes and put eyes in her so it'll look like it's barely open. It'll be like, like this, you know, so barely open. I want to do that with her, but I'm afraid to. But I'll look into it and see how to do that, how to 
uh, put eyes in closed eyed silicone. I'll have to look it up and watch tutorials on it just to figure it out. So anyway, guys, that is it for now. I hope that helps you guys for doing, wanting to do air dry. I mean, these people that sell the kits, these paints, you have to really follow their thing on how to do it. Like, I'm going to read this later and try. Because maybe the next kit I do, I'll do with this stuff. I don't know. I've never used somebody else's paints. I've, I only know how mine work. So, and I'm comfortable with it. And that's the other thing. Am I going to ruin a kit to try, you know what I mean? <laughs> to try it. So, um, I may get another Behringer and try it. I don't know, or a kit from Dolls by Sandy, like this one. I need a head, though, and I think this is a, um, I think it's a 17-inch doll, so I need a 17-inch head, and I think this is, because it doesn't tell, I wish it would tell you on the rims what it is. Like, this one's going to suck, putting glass beads in there. You will have to use a um, thing. You'll have to use a funnel to put glass beads in this. It needs to be washed because it's got marks on it. But I need a head for this one. And I'm pretty sure it's 17 inch. I am pretty sure that it's a 17. So this is considered preemie, preemie size, but it's probably gonna be more newborn size actually but I need a 17 inch head and then I have a body for a um, 15 inch doll so I need a 15 to 16 inch doll and I need the kit I need a kit to get for this so yeah, and I haven't done that yet because these are the mis mis mismatched ones I had bought to try to make another doll and this is what I had left over so I'm going to have to figure that out so anyway guys, long video I hope it helps um, and if you're still not comfortable painting try just doing a head and get a cuddle body you could do that too so alright any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try to help. And if it's easier for me to do a video to explain it, I'll do a video. Because <laughs> it's hard to explain when you're trying to type. You know, it's hard. It's easier just to pick up the phone and talk to somebody. So, but there you go. And I hope you enjoyed. And we will see you all again soon. Bye now.